Anatomy and Physiology for the Beauty Industry, Nails, Hands and Feet. Manicures and pedicures are two of the most popular treatments that we carry out in the beauty industry. There are new techniques constantly being developed and we need to ensure that we understand the anatomy of these areas to ensure that we don't treat a client who isn't a suitable candidate. Nails. Nail art, artificial nails and new polishing techniques have never been more popular as clients have evolved from seeing them as a special occasion treat to incorporating them into their weekly beauty routines. We often mistreat our nails by biting them, using them as tools or cutting our toenails incorrectly, causing pain and discomfort and we forget that they are there as an appendage of the skin to protect our fingers and toes. Healthy nails are smooth and pink and have good circulation under the nail plate. An unhealthy nail could be discoloured, crumbling, heavily ridged or more. So what is a nail made from? Nails are made from keratinised protein and are continuously growing around 6 months for a fingernail, from base to edge, and 12 months for a toenail. The nail grows from the matrix like the hair, and if you've ever damaged or lost a nail, you will notice that either a new one will grow back if you haven't damaged the matrix, or the new nail will grow permanently damaged if at all. Illness, seasons, nutritional deficiencies and more all affect the growth rate and quality of the nails. Nail structure part one. Matrix. This is the area of the nail that is living and where cells are constantly reproducing through mitosis. As they move forward, they dry and harden due to keratinization. These dead cells have no nucleus and that's why we don't feel pain when we cut our nails. Nail fold. Protective layer of skin over the matrix area. Cuticle. This is the seal around the nail plate and under the edge, which acts as a barrier against invading bacteria and infection. It has different parts, such as the eponychium, at the base of the nail, the hyponychium, the skin under the free edge, and the perinychium, at either side of the nail plate. Linula. This is the part that looks like a half moon and isn't always visible in every nail. It joins the matrix and the nail bed. Nail structure, part two. Nail wall. This acts as a guide for the nail as it grows up from the matrix. Nail bed. This is the skin situated underneath the nail plate. Nail plate. This is the nail itself. It is made from layers of keratinized cells held together with a little moisture. It stops at the free edge. Free edge. The edge of the nail that grows beyond the finger. Bones of the hand. Just below your elbow joint, you have two long bones, the radius, the shorter bone on the side of the thumb, and the ulna, the longer bone on the side of the little finger. You have eight irregular wrist bones called carpal bones, five bones in the palm of your hand called metacarpals, and 14 finger bones called phalanges, three per finger and two in the thumb. Muscles in the hand and arm. The muscles in this area help to produce movement in your fingers, hands and wrist. You have flexors that allow the hand and arm to bend, such as the flexor carpi radialis, and extensors that enable you to straighten your hands and fingers out, such as extensor digitorum. Hand and arm blood supply. Your fingers are supplied by the digital arteries, and we sometimes call the fingers digits. The hand is supplied by the metacarpal arteries and the palmar arch artery, and the forearm is supplied by the radial and ulnar arteries. Bones of the foot, part one. Just below your knee joint, you have two long bones called the fibula, thinner bone on the little toe side, and tibia, thicker bone on the big toe side. You have seven ankle bones called tarsals, five foot bones called metatarsals, and 14 toe bones called phalanges, three per toe except two in the big toe. Muscles in the leg and foot. The muscles in this area help you to maintain posture, bend and stretch. They contract and relax in relation to the movements that you are making. Muscles include flexors such as gastrocnemius and soleus and abductors such as abductor hallucis. Your foot has to be weight bearing and flexible and in order to do this, the muscles here connect to tendons, such as the Achilles, and ligaments to support and adapt to any surface. Your toes are supplied by the plantar digital arteries, your foot is supplied by the lateral and medial plantar, underside of the foot, 
and dorsalis pedis arteries, and your leg is supplied by the peroneal, anterior and posterior tibial arteries. <laughs>